Buonasera a tutti. Uh, uh, a different, I, I, th I think I can show you a different view from the pitch goal technique, although we're going to talk about uh, um, um, branches devices. Um, I have to show you uh, some cases with uh, the pitch goal technique. I don't have the same experience as uh, Melisano and Greco. Uh, you're going to see here. Um, those are my disclosure. Um, I like to comment that because uh, uh, in 2008 we, we described this in Journal of Vascular Surgery. And in, in my um, view, I think that is the first time it, uh, someone has uh, mentioned the coincidence of, the, uh, of all the branches. So uh, we did at that time uh, 11 cases, but we planned the 23. So based on the 23 cases, we did this watch like in the, all, all the branches here. I think that's the beginning. Uh, uh, for uh, 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 the branch of devices. Later on, uh, Jim uh, uh, did this study, uh, promising, quite promising, with 80-80% um, of the patients eligible for uh, uh, um, a branch of, uh, the, uh, branch of device off the shelf. So uh, we are talking here about patients like that. Uh, they have previous devices implanted, and then you have to cover all the aorta, including like this one, we cover the ascending aorta. So uh, uh, patients more complicated. But I like to start always with this uh, uh, Zoli. I'm not sure if Dr. Zoli is already in Italy or is still in New York, but his, uh, this work he published in 2010 in Annals of Thoracic Surgery with uh, Dr. Grip. It's very interesting because after an open surgery, after open surgery, even with all uh, the false lumen thrombosis, in 25% of the cases, uh, still, they still develop an aneurysms. That means, which we know for a long time, since people described uh, that uh, even a thrombosis in 2001, inferino aortic aneurysms can rupture, because uh, thrombosis do not protect of growing, do not protect. And that's the reason I do not believe in, in the, uh, like uh, this, what, how you say that the uh, luminar flow, uh, the, huh? See, no, no, the device. Cardiac device. I do not believe it because that allows the pressure uh, dissection. In, in my view, the pitch coat is quite similar. So, uh, I show uh, you a case. When you see a case like that with uh, one, two, three operations, three endovascular devices, and then have a huge aneurysm, which has the size of his heart, in an old man, and you think, uh, well, I showed that case to uh, Dr. Coselli, uh, a friend of us, and he said, well, this uh, will never expand. It's too thick. You can see here the... the, the, the the, the new wall between the two lumens. But look what happened. Uh, we did a, a three branch of devices and in six months. So what I'm saying here that we do not know the behavior of this septal membrane because we are used to open surgery. Now it's a new world. We don't know the behavior. But I think with the case we have done, that they will expand just like that. And then we have this case with not, now I review this, this patient with five year follow up, all, all branches very well. So uh, I hear another case with, uh, where they put uh, petico, like a petico technique, they put only the stent here in the abdominal portion and the device here in the thoracic portion. So the the stent, the, the, the dissection stent, rupture here. You can see the part of the, the upper part. And then divided, the, you lose the celiac trunk, although it has flow, and you have the right renal here. So we made a new plan with a, a right renal upper here so we can get from uh, above. And we did. So here, uh, uh, could you run that video? 
could you run that video? Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, I think uh, I have just one minute. Is that okay? <laughs> um, uh, even that, I showed that and go straight to my conclusion. But you, you should see that because uh, uh, here is a thoracic device, and then you have a, a stent device in the aorta, and you can see that the patient develop a huge aneurysm. Uh, so, in my view, when you you keep the flow in the false lumen, sooner or later the patient gonna develop an aneurysm or a comp worse complications. Here you can see that the, this device uh, does, did nothing that to help that patient. He has a huge aneurysm. The device is fractured. So I go ahead. I go ahead and uh, look. Look at the. That is the device inside the patient. So uh, we replaced the whole thing. So again, uh, this patient had a lot of uh, interventions and it still develop a large aneurysm here. So we, we again uh, we put a four inner branch device, and that's the flow study for him. And uh, the, it was not difficult. It was a very nice case. This patient later developed a large aneurysm. So we go ahead and. Uh, uh, I showed his picture, but uh, I think uh, the aortic dissection represents a major, major challenge to endovascular treatment. No single tact for endovascular treatment applies to all case. Uh, the stents combined with the free pitch coat help in the process of remodeling the aortic thrombosis of the false lumen and the re of the true lumen, provided there is no more communication between the two lumens in the visceral portion. Infrarenal, iliac, are especially useful in acute procedures to facilitate future expansion of true lumen. In the presence of multiple communications, occluding exhaustively, search for all the communications essential to prevent aortic degeneration. Uh, this is the patient with uh, uh, NASH, and then we, we push, uh, and uh, Rinaldo here from San Rafael, in two years ago, he helped me. So this guy has the whole thing excluded, and he's doing very well. So I, I'm going to finish here, and thank you, and show here the Italy team jumping in, in Brazil. So. <laughs>